Okay, welcome back to another Golang video. Before moving on to the next topic, which is data structures in Go, we're going to look at one, well actually two more things about functions, which are the keyword defer and a built-in function called panic, which is right here, and I'll explain both of these in this video. So, let's start off with a simpler one which is defer and what I've got here is a simple golang program um, inside my function main well actually let's start outside my function main I have two functions which I've created one of them is called do something and it's just gonna print out its identifier and I've got another one which is do something else and it's gonna print out do something else with its identifier so, um, if we go into our main function, the first thing we see is defer do something, and then on the next line, do something else. So what defer does is simply, t it's a keyword which goes in front of a function and sends it to the end of the call stack in the function it's currently in. So this function the f this function is being deferred at the main function so it sends this function to the very end to be executed last in the main function in the function it's being called in so just imagine we didn't have defer this we know what would happen we it'll call do something it'll do that and then do something else do something else but if we had to further, what this is going to do is say, okay, you, you're deferring this function, so just leave it to last. So it's just going to send it to the end and continue the program. And logically, with this explanation, then what this program is going to do is call this, and then when it's seen that the main function has ended, call this. So if we see this run, as you can see, it's called this first, and then at the very end of the main function, it's called do something. So that's really what the fur is, um, is. And you might be thinking, how is this useful? Well, um, there aren't many programming languages that have something like this, so this is why you might think it's not useful. However, in Go, it's very idiomatic to have when you're reading with um what well, not reading when you're dealing with um things such as file file reading um network connections at the end you always have to close that operation close the file you're reading close the network you're connecting to at the very end after you've done using it so i'm afraid i don't have any example to show you but once you've opened the file, usually what you're going to see straight after it is defer file.close. So it's just going to say, just in case, just close it at the very end so we don't forget. And it's quite useful once you start using it with um, files and operations like that. Next, we're going to look at the panic function. Um, this is the panic function is actually a built-in function while defer as you can see has no parentheses and this is simply a keyword. Okay so here we have a, um, a simple program we importing the IOUtil uh, module and what this does is read a file and it's reading names.txt which I have down here and this contains just five names then w this is called error checking or error handling and we'll, I'll do a video on that explaining it more in depth in the future and then we have this for loop which prints out all the names in the file as you can see however um, what we're looking at is the panic function so here, well, first of all, panic, you're going to see it 
pretty much in nearly all error handling operations. And just to uh, let you know, this is an error handler because it's checking if an error is not nil. So an error exists, then it's going to panic. So what panic does is create a runtime error. A it just causes the program to panic and break. How is this useful? Well, for example, it maybe you need if the let's say if you do return an error, then maybe you don't want the user to see the error, so it just crashes the program. And of course, it returns um, some feedback to us. So if we run this, well, we already did. It returns no error. But however, so as we can see, error is not nil. But if we were to say error is nil, because it is, because no error has been created. If we run now, you're gonna see the panic, nil, and then this stuff. So this is the panic um, runtime error, and what this does, well, like I said, it just creates an error and it reports to you the value of the the variable you're passing it in. So you're passing error in, and as we said, error equals nil, so it's gonna return nil. What we can do is simply write hello and it'll return hello or something more interesting such as the program failed at the error, error checking procedure and it's just going to return that there and it'll help you find what's gone wrong so I mean nothing too interesting in this video but always um, good to learn about this because there are two concepts that appear quite a lot in Go programming and I thought it would be us useful to show you before we continue on to slices in the next video so thanks for watching if you have any doubts on anything I explain just leave a comment and I'll try to explain it to you there thanks for watching